Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Wednesday, August 8th, 2018. Not a lot to talk about in the Atlantic Basin, but boy, the Pacific is certainly busy. We have Hector out here, which is going to pass well to the south of Hawaii. With minimal impacts, it won't be a zero impact event, but it certainly won't be that much of an impactful event either. We'll look at that in more detail in a moment. Tropical Storm Christy sandwiched in between Hector and then John over here to the east. And then in the Atlantic, this is now fully tropical, meaning that the wind field and the convection and everything is tighter, closer to the center, more tropical in nature. And this is Tropical Storm Debbie way out in the North Atlantic. That's really, that's a sign right there that this area through here for now is pretty much dead uh, as a doornail. Now over in the Westpac, Tropical Storm Yagi has formed recently and this is more than likely going to impact somewhere close to Taiwan and then mainland China and then uh, Typhoon Shanshan or however you pronounce it going to make landfall in Japan. So globally things are very busy and the overall ACE index this year is going to be much higher than we've seen in the last couple of years probably. Uh, mainly due to the Pacific being so busy and it's not going to be dead forever through here. This will eventually uh, become more active as we've talked about but it's not anytime soon. So today's update going to be fairly brief. Let's take a look at the satellite animation here from our good friends at Tropical Tidbits. Uh, where is Debbie in this satellite picture? It's way up here in the North Atlantic. Very small, sitting over marginally warm enough water uh, if it's lucky. And then there's upper lows all over the place out here. Uh, you can see these even in this infrared imagery. The intertropical convergent zone, pretty dry for today overall, but a little bit more moisture, a little bit more convection. As I've said, it's slowly turning around and water temperatures out here are definitely warming up. We're going to take a look at that closer tomorrow. Uh, I was looking at the Reynolds sea surface temperature analysis from the National Hurricane Center and uh, there's definitely a pretty rapid increase in water temperatures in the main development region and it won't be long before they're pretty much right where they should be for this time of year. Uh, in the Western Caribbean a little flare-up of convection near Central America to the east of Belize but no organization seen with that just too much sinking air probably the upper level winds too strong cutting across here as well owed to the fact that we have all of that action in the eastern Pacific. Another thing I want to point out, and this is certainly great news, very dry now for the most part, only scattered diurnal type thunderstorms. You know, they pop up at night and they die off during the day and uh, no organized areas. We don't have that big fire hose of moisture just ringing the bell of the eastern part of the U.S. right now with lots and lots of rain. We had that, but that's gone finally. Most of the Gulf of Mexico also free and clear of any convection. So real quick, looking at Debbie's track here over the next few days, it'll eventually dissipate and be just a remnant low and die out over the colder water of the North Atlantic. The remnant vorticity signature and storm system that stays over the ocean, though, will probably head over towards the uh, British Isles and we'll look at that more tomorrow as well uh, and the water temperatures off in that area are also warmer than average so we'll have to see what happens. Debbie may be an interesting feature for parts of the British Isles. In the Pacific there's Christy trying to strengthen if we click on it you can get an idea of the track. It should stay well out into the open Pacific and not bother anybody as you can see there and then John a uh, fairly large system. Look at this, some cloud cover uh, coming up, maybe some monsoonal influence. I uh, got you know a lot of moisture down here and so some of that's come up out of northern Mexico. Uh, these are probably high clouds through here. Uh, I didn't notice any major um, flooding or anything like that. So, and you know what, I'm just gonna cheat real quick and open up another window and check the weather.gov site. And um, yeah, I mean, that's you know, nice and clear there in Arizona. If we look at the radar, I just want to confirm that. It's kind of got past me. And we scroll down, a little bit of rainfall here in southwest Arizona. 
uh, and some of that moisture coming up out of Mexico, but really not a big problem. Now, where were we? Right here. So this is John and John's track. Uh, luckily, going to move away from the Baja, even though it's going to parallel that peninsula. So again, no major impacts to Mexico from these systems in the eastern Pacific. And then we get to Hector, and it's going to pass the core of Hector, well to the south of the big island of Hawaii here and there'll still be some effects some of that strong northeast flow around the circulation and we can see that pretty clearly here in the goes west satellite imagery zoom in on this a little bit uh, Hector being uh, large enough to at least bring some high clouds now let's change the color that'll be better and may maybe just maybe some rain showers on the southern and southeast part of the big island it'll switch the wind direction around and push some of that uh, volcanic fog they call it vog <laughs> towards Hilo unfortunately that could be a problem um, but the impacts from Hector are going to be really really insignificant overall larger waves yes and those can be dangerous um, but you can see the eye there kind of moving south of west and it's kind of filling in just a little bit not quite as organized so there you go no problems to speak of from Hector so nationally the radar nice and quiet for the most part except for the nation's midsection heavy rains around Oklahoma City I saw western Tennessee there and I really like this because today my family and I are headed up here uh, to the Crystal Coast area the southern part of the Crystal Coast of North Carolina to Hammocks Beach State Park and I like to see this nice and quiet uh, maybe it'll light up later in the day it's gonna be really hot heat advisories all through this area uh, I love it the summertime weather hot humid afternoon convection there were some storms off in the distance last night it was really neat to see uh, I'm just I love it that kind of weather is exciting to me I like calm sunny days but when the weather is you know interesting it, it makes it more interesting we'll just leave it at that but at least the tropics are not that interesting in the Atlantic I don't see any changes anytime soon ie the next week to 10 days so if you've got a cruise planned or you're going to Florida a lot of people ask me you know in emails and on social media hey I'm going to Disney or I'm going to Tampa or I'm going to the Keys how do things look you know for the next two weeks uh, I don't see anything developing to be honest with you in the Atlantic but then in September, I do believe things will change. We'll deal with that in September. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. As always, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, and we'll talk to more. Talk to more? <laughs> That's great. We will talk some more tomorrow. I promise, even if I can't say it. I'll see you again tomorrow.